what's up VC it's Steve again harmless rebel time for another quick video this time we're gonna do a little bit of uh, some seven inches I was uh, cleaning my records today and listening to some seven inches and decided to go ahead and do a uh, do a quick video just kind of jump into what I was spending today um, first up this is the, the the recent reissue from what was it 2014 it doesn't say on the back. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, 2014, uh, The Trooper. Uh, still one of my all-time favorite songs. Um, and the back was Cross-Eyed Mary. This is the, uh, the European uh, version of the 2014 reissues there. I've been picking up quite a bit of uh, Iron Maiden stuff. Actually, uh, I'm going to do a video pretty soon. Uh, I may do an Iron Maiden collection video because I've got a, I've picked up a lot of rare stuff and some grails um, that I've been on the lookout for for years. I finally got so. Um, regardless, that uh, next up, uh, this is off of uh, Virtual Eleven, uh, the Age of the the Age and the Gambler or the Angel and the Gambler, and then uh, the B side was uh, Blood on the World's Hands, which was a previously unreleased live version of the song. This is a really cool picture disc. These go for pretty crazy money, and I found it for relatively cheap. I want to say these go for like 25, 30 bucks, and I, I think I paid like eight bucks for it. One thing I don't like, it's, it's, it's shorter. Quite a bit shorter than a regular seven inch, so. Still cool pickup. Uh, next up, not really hard rock or metal here. We got the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. I love these guys uh, back in the 90s when they first came out. Um, I love their mix of, uh, of ska and punk. Um, very different than the other ska bands, the, the, the third wave ska bands that were out during that period. Um, really cool though. Uh, the A side is Where Do You uh, Where Do You Go, which is probably one of their biggest hits other than the impression that I get. And then the B side is uh, an air, a cover of Aerosmith's Sweet Emotion. And it's a, a kind of a really cool punk cover of that. Worth checking out if you've never checked that one out before. Um, but this is an original uh, 91 pressing. On uh, I believe that one was on blue vinyl. And next up, this is a really cool pickup. Um, there is a Japanese guy that I, I, I buy singles from. He doesn't get a lot of metal, so I don't buy that much from him. It's uh, probably maybe six or seven um, singles a year. Uh, but what's really cool is he doesn't charge shipping and it's usually good price. I think I paid uh, under 10 bucks a piece for these uh, for these three, uh, which is a really killer when you include that they came from Japan. Well, when you add in the fact that they were shipped from Japan. So we've got uh, Black Knight and Into the Fire from Deep Purple. Love this song. I've actually got the uh, record store day a few years ago they did a pressing of this I've got the record store pressing as well um, but this is the original 71 pressing uh, next up this one was really cool this one sounds absolutely phenomenal I mean just mint 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 um, this has come together and uh, Kings and Queens from Aerosmith um, I've been buying a lot of Aerosmith singles I've been on the lookout for them lately trying to build up the uh, Aerosmith collection and then this one was really cool too um, I was made for loving you in hard times from kiss I actually might have paid a little more but I want to say I paid 12 bucks for this but still definitely worth it it sounds phenomenal um, this one I was really shocked to find um, this was a UK only release um, so a lot of these that I'm going to show here and a lot that I'll show in future videos come from the same store um, one of my local stores, and it's become a favorite of mine, it's called uh, uh, Waterloo Sunset. Um, and it's right by the, the Braves Baseball Stadium. It's right outside the stadium. Um, I guess the deal is they have a buyer, or they have a, a customer who is a, he's a record buyer. And he buys for um, Japanese, he's got Japanese uh, customers that he buys exclusively for. Um, and he buys these huge... Uh, collections of seven inches uh, he's got a, he specializes in providing American mint American um, seven inches to uh, customers in Japan and apparently the customers are super picky if there's anything wrong with the records at all um, they won't buy them 
Um, they have to be just uh, stone mint. Um, well, he buys them in bulk, so he buys them for really cheap. He sells them for good money to the Japanese, but the ones that the Japanese customers don't want, he sells to this local record store for really cheap, and I usually get them for one or two bucks a piece when I buy from the store. And uh, every once in a while, he'll find something really cool, and even then, you'll pay five or six bucks for it. And I think I paid five ninety nine for this, but this is uh, keeping a rendezvous and apparatus from Budgie. Such a good uh, seven inch. Um, just the song apparatus. Um, it blows me away that these guys were never bigger than they were. And this was later. This is off a of knife fight, so this is eighty one. But this is still phenomenal writing. Um, I, I know some of the earlier songs. There's some of the earlier albums. His voice takes a little getting used to. But by this time point, he had his voice. I mean, he found his sweet spot. And man, this stuff is so good. It just, it's like I said, it just blows me away that these guys were never huge, especially as long as they put out albums. I mean, you're talking 25 years. Um, they were putting out just solid, solid, uh, just amazing album after amazing album. Uh, next up, don't uh, don't judge me. I love this. Um, a little bit of Paula Abdul, <laughs> uh, straight up and uh, cold hearted. I actually like everything that Paul Abdul did, except for the opposites attract. I, 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 I actually, I, I probably liked that song in '89 when it came out, or '88. Um, yeah, '88. Um, even now, though, I still love listening to some of her stuff. Uh, straight up, when the, when I was playing this earlier, singing along just like it was 1989. Uh, next up, a little bit of Motley Crue, uh, "Too Young to Fall in Love" promo. Of course, uh, of uh, Shout at the Devil. And then also Looks at Kill off of Shout at the Devil. And the B side of this is Piece of Your Action off of uh, um, uh, Too Fast for Love. I don't know why I couldn't get it out. Again, these things are just in excellent condition. But see, it has a little tiny split at the bottom. So because of that, the, the buyers won't buy this. Next up, uh, a song that I absolutely love. I actually spun this one um, a couple of times. The one thing I don't like is uh, like the uh, the the Iron Maiden where it was uh, a really short seven inch. This one is is like a quarter inch longer. Luckily, I had some of these oversized sleeves left over from. Uh, um, I switched over to these new the clear bag sleeves that are, are perfect fits for the seven inch. I didn't like these because this other these ones I got off of eBay were too long. Um, I had a couple left though, which is perfect because, like I said, this is this is a quarter inch longer and it won't fit into a regular seven inch sleeve. But regardless, we got uh, uh, Crimson and Clover and uh, Oh Woe Is Me, two killer songs uh, from Joe Jett. I love um, Crimson and Clover, such a great song. Let's see what else we got. This one will be a short one. Uh, a little bit of Midnight Dice. I talked about these guys. Um, Initially, they had just released a, uh, a two-song CD, or I'm sorry, um, a two-song uh, demo, or um, can't get it out, cassette. Uh, Underground Power Records went ahead and released it to vinyl. It was a limited run of 500. This is 466. The first 150 are on a splatter vinyl, and then the, the remaining uh, copies are uh, black vinyl, which is what this one is. Uh, really good. Like I said, this is these guys are the core of Satan's Hollow. Satan's Hollow uh, fell apart. Um, the rhythm guitarist and the bass player, I believe, uh, left the band. And instead of going on as Satan's Hollow, they decided to uh, change it up to Midnight Dice. Um, this one is a four piece. They don't have a rhythm. Uh, and like I, I mentioned before, uh, this is not as good as Satan's Hollow. It's the same singer. She still sounds phenomenal. Um, the, the music is not as thick. And now, I, you know, looking at, at the difference in the, the players, they lost that rhythm guitarist. And it does make a difference in the sound. Um, I do prefer Satan's Hollow uh, over this, but this is still really, really good. And I look forward to see uh, what they do in the future. Uh, next up, uh, an original UK pressing, uh, LA Connection and Lady of the Lake from Rainbow. Definitely a nice piece for the collection. 
Uh, this is one that I picked up in Phoenix when I was there um, last year. And then last but not least, uh, one of my favorite albums uh, from last, or one of my top five, I think, from last year uh, was the debut from this band. This is uh, Void, uh, V-O-J-D, and this is uh, Behind the Frame, which was their song. And the B-side is a really cool prog song from a, a UK prog band called Tempest. Actually, I actually had to look this up. It, it's Funeral Empire. Um, the original song is really cool, too. Just a uh, really cool seven, early 70s prog. Um, with uh, They add a little bit, uh, a little metal edge to it, so very cool. Um, that's it, guys. Wanted to keep it quick. Just uh, spending my day cleaning, cleaning uh, music and cleaning records and listening to records. Um, in the background, we're listening to KXM. This is their debut. Um, they've had two albums, maybe three albums since then, but this is... Uh, um, Doug Panique from King's X, um, George Lynch from uh, Dawkin, obviously, and from Lynch Mob, and then uh, Ray Luzier on drums, who was the drummer for Korn. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, take care. Uh, have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon.